Hi, this is Diane Spencer with Western Computer, and today we're going to talk about another tip and technique when using D365 for finance and operations. Today we're going to talk about using currencies. One of the ways to use some of the functionality of D365 to speed up and standardize some of our processes is to use global settings as they are available. In the area of currencies, D365 gives us some great global setups that we can do. So let's take a look at those. The first global setup, and when I talk about a global setup, I'm just talking about something that you set it up once in one of your legal entities, and it's available to all of your legal entities. When you first set up a company, you can just load all of the global currencies, and they will be there available for you. The next global setup that, again, you set up once and it's available to all your companies is the exchange rate types. We have several exchange rates here, but normally companies just use a few. Maybe the rate that you use for transactions during the month, maybe the rate you use for month-end revaluations, that sort of thing. But again, you set these up once and they're available to you across all of your companies. And then we also had the ability to set up exchange rates once, and then they're available to us across all of our companies. So give you a sense, here I've set up the exchange rates between US dollars and euros, and all of the companies that have transactions where there is an exchange between euros and dollars will be able to use these rates. I don't need to go into each company every day or every month and set up the exchange rates. Also new in D365 is we have the ability to use an out-of-the-box integration tool, OANDA, which is an international provider of exchange rates. So you do have the ability out-of-the-box to set up that integration. So that's what we would set up for a global setup of currencies. One last piece I will mention that a couple of our clients have found very useful is the ability to set up what are the exchange rates between particular currencies and for a particular company. I don't see a lot of applicability to this for most of our clients, but I've had a couple clients who, for statutory reasons in a particular company, need those currency gain or losses to go to a particular account or series of accounts. And so that's also available to you if you have that situation in one of the companies or countries in which you do business. From setting up currency for a specific company now, as we've narrowed down to looking at a company setup, most of that is done in the general ledger ledger setup. So we have the ability to set up the accounting currency and the reporting currency. What is really the default exchange rate type, which in this case is default, as well as what are the main accounts for the realized currency gain or loss and unrealized currency gain or loss for this particular legal entity. You can override these by particular legal entity for a specific currency if you have the need to do that. So that's where we set up the overall default for a particular company. We can also drill down and set up particular currencies and currency rate types by main account. So in this case, I have a bank account, which is a UK bank account. And as you would expect, the default currency for this account is British pounds, even though the currency for this company is US dollars. And if I wanted to say that when this main account is revalued at the end of a month, I want to use other than that default revaluation type, I can have the ability to override that here for this account and for all of the companies that use this account, assuming that this chart of accounts is a global chart of accounts and is shared across multiple legal entities. And then you can go down even the next step and say that in particular company DEMF, that this account uses a different exchange rate type in this company, which is different than the chart of account of wide exchange rate that is used for this account. We also had the ability to set up a specific default currency by customer and vendor. I'm going to be talking about vendors here, but everything that I say about vendors and payables also applies to receivables and to customers. So in this case, I've got Best Supplier Europe, which is a vendor that we work with that is based in France. And as you might expect, this vendor's default currency is euros. 
So every purchase order, invoice, payment we do to this vendor will be in euros. We have the ability to override a specific transaction. Maybe we have one large purchase and for whatever reason that purchase is in dollars, we have the ability to override that for a particular transaction. But everything we do in general for this vendor will be in euros. And then I also set up in the interest of time, I pre-baked an invoice from this vendor and then payment of the invoice. And the payment is in a different month, and so it would pick up a different exchange rate. So the original invoice, which was dated March 15th, was for a thousand euros, and the exchange rate in March was 1.23168 dollars to euros. But then when we paid it in April, it was a slightly different exchange rate, as you can see, and the settlement of that invoice resulted in a two dollar and three cent gain loss for this particular transaction. If you have significant transactions in other than your company accounting currency, you can, for payables and for receivables, do a foreign currency revaluation monthly, quarterly, annually, however you want to do that. And that basically will revalue any open or non-settled payables or receivables transactions. And then that's when you would recognize an unrealized gain or loss. And of course, in the general ledger, you have the ability to revalue, whenever you ask that that be done, any main accounts that you want to be revalued as of that date for your accounting, for your GAAP, or your international reporting purposes.